This video will show you how to solve and graph an inequality. Let's start with the graphing part. x is greater than 2 can be translated algebraically to this, x greater than 2. If we're talking about this being the solution set to an inequality, this says any number greater than 2 is in our solution set. So that means maybe 3 and 4 and 5, but not just the whole numbers, 2.5, 3.1, 4.9, etc. And if I kept putting dots all over this line, you'd see that all of this is getting colored in. Well, how close up to 2 do we go? Well, 2 itself is not part of the solution set. And you have two choices for how you fill this in. Some books use an open circle right here on 2 to indicate that 2 itself is not part of the solution set. But the very next number greater than 2 is part of the solution set. We can't name the next number greater than 2. 2.1 or 2.01 or 2.001, etc. So we use the open circle. A lot of books use, instead of the open circle, they will use an open parenthesis with the same kind of shading idea. Both of these are acceptable depending on your instructor, depending on your book, your class. So both of those mean the same thing. This open parenthesis would need to be facing this way because we are shading this way. We need the parenthesis to face this way. There's a minor difference in x greater than or equal to 2. In this case, the 2 is part of the solution set. So in keeping with this idea, instead of an open circle here, we have a solid circle on 2, and we will shade to the right. That means any number in that region will make this inequality statement true. For the parenthesis idea, we use a square bracket on the number. The square bracket indicates that 2 is part of the solution set. Less than is the same idea with the circle or the parenthesis or the bracket. x less than 1, the numbers that are less than 1 are the ones down here to the left. But it's just less than 1, so we're going to have an open circle on 1, or we're going to have the open parenthesis on 1, shading to the left. The reason the parenthesis faces this way is because we are shading to the left. Less than or equal to, because it's the or equal to, we're going to give it a solid circle, and we're still going to shade to the left. Less than or equal to with the bracket is going to be a square bracket facing to the left, because that's the way we shade. In the first two examples, we had x written on the left side of our inequality statement. Sometimes you see this. Now, this says, if we read it from left to right, 3 is greater than x. 3 is greater than x is the same as saying x is less than 3. It's a perspective thing. You know, I'm older than you means you're younger than me. You're taller than him means he's shorter than you. This is the better idea for us graphing-wise to have the x on the left side because we would like to graph our solution set in reference to the x. Once we have switched this around, this is pretty easy to graph. x less than 3, I can use my parenthesis or my open circle shading to the left. And that's my solution set on x less than 3. When you swap this around, it's perfectly legitimate to just twin, turn the whole thing around. The x goes here, the 3 goes there, but you must maintain the meaning. Notice the little part of the inequality is facing towards the x, and when I swap it around, it's still facing towards the x. So double check that when you do your swap. When you are graphing inequalities, there are only two things to consider, and you could pause the video right here to copy these down if you need to. You only have to decide on what notation to put at the number, either the open circle or the parentheses or the solid circle or the bracket, depending on what your book does. If it's plain old less than or plain old greater, it's an open circle or it's the parentheses. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you're going to use the solid or the square bracket. The only other thing you have to decide on is what is the direction of the shading. If you're using less than or less than or equal to, that tells you to shade to the left. Remember, less is left. x greater than, x greater than or equal to, you shade to the right. So with graphing, those are the only two things you have to consider. So now let's take a look at a couple inequalities to solve first. The good thing about solving an inequality is that the steps are the same as what you did when you solved an equation. You still need to get the x alone by doing the opposite. 3x minus 6 
means I'm going to have to undo that subtracting 6 by adding 6 to both sides. In that case, our 6s cancel out. We have 3x less than or equal to 15. To undo 3 times x, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, giving us x less than or equal to 5. So those steps are exactly the same things you would have done had this been an equal sign instead. The only difference is it says x less than or equal to 5. And because there are an infinite number of numbers that are less than or equal to 5, we show our solution set on a graph. x less than or equal to 5. If you're thinking about the solid circle idea, there's my 5. Less than, less is left. I'm going to shade down here to the left. If we're using the bracket instead, that's a less than or equal to. That's the square bracket. Still shading down here to the left. A little more complicated here. It's the idea of getting our x's to one side and our numbers to the other. The easiest thing to do here is to subtract 4x from both sides, which gives us 4x minus 6 because those have canceled out over here, less than or equal to 10. Undo this minus 6 by adding 6 to both sides. When the 6's cancel out here, we're left with 4x less than or equal to 16. Undo that multiplying by 4 by dividing by 4, which gives us x less than or equal to 4. It is less than or equal to, so that tells me I get a solid circle on 4. It is less than, so we're shading down here to the left. If I'm using the square bracket idea, this goes in that same direction. The reason for the brackets has to do with what's called interval notation, which I have covered in another video if you want to look that up. We're just staying with the graphing of the inequalities on this one. There's one twist to solving these inequalities, and it's this. If you divide or multiply by a negative, the inequality sign must change. If you divide or multiply by a negative, the inequality sign must change. So in this little inequality statement, to solve this, I'm going to have to divide both sides by negative 3. As soon as you write negative 3 like this in a division, you need to grab hold of that inequality sign and change it before you do any arithmetic. Because the common mistake is just to forget to change it or think, oh, I'll change it later. Well, change it in the beginning. As soon as you write this negative 3 on the bottom, you need to drag this down, swap that around, and then do your arithmetic. The negative 3's cancel, which gives us the x. 12 divided by negative 3 gives us negative 4. And then to graph, this is just plain old greater. I'm going to have an open circle on negative 4. It is greater, so that's shading to the right. If your book is using the parentheses, then we're going to have the open parentheses here and still shade to the right. Why does dividing or multiplying by a negative change the sign? It's a matter of the meaning being changed. Take a statement like 2 less than 4. Let's divide both sides by negative 2. Well, 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Is negative 1 still less than negative 2? No. Think about your number line. The number that is more to the right on the number line is greater. That means negative 1 is greater than negative 2. So dividing by the negative changed the inequality sign around. It changed the meaning of the statement. Same thing is true for multiplying. Take our same 2 less than 4. Let's multiply both sides by negative 3. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Is negative 6 still less than negative 12? No. Negative 6 is more to the right on the number line. Therefore, negative 6 is greater than negative 12. So that's why dividing or multiplying by a negative is going to require us to change that inequality sign. There is a common mistake associated with this. You don't change the inequality sign every time you see a negative in the problem. It's only when you actually multiply or divide by a negative. In this example, 2x is less than negative 6. To solve, I need to divide both sides by 2. When I do that, I get x less than negative 3. There's no reason to change the inequality sign. Yes, that's a negative, but we divided by a positive 2. So in this case, we did not change the sign. Over here, to solve this, that's negative 2 times x. To undo that, we need to divide by a negative. And because we divided by a negative, we circle up that inequality sign, we switch it around, and then we take care of canceling here and do this arithmetic. So we divided by a negative, and therefore we did change the inequality sign.